All right. Welcome to our podcast. We're really happy that everyone could join us again today. And we have a few special topics again um, yes. too, that I'll let Evan know about ahead of time. And again, a surprise for him. The Ford Escape Games No Haircut Edition, Quarantine Mode. Yes, both of our hair is much longer than we prefer, but <laughs> it happens. Um, so our first two topics today are really about props we've made. And props we've made more than one time now. So we can talk about some of the things we've learned in each of those renditions. And we are actually probably going to be building at least one more, probably two of one of them again. So the first thing we'll talk about is our Ouija board prop. It's really the first prop we ever finished from start to finish together. And that is in use in an escape room in Dallas today. And then our other topic is about rotary phones, which we've made several of at this point in time. And we have two more that we're getting prepared to work on as well. And then a surprise for Evan. Yeah, so our we'll talk about the Ouija board first, I suppose. Um, the Ouija board uh, is, like I said, currently in an escape room in Dallas, and then we have uh, we've actually made a couple more. Um, but uh, the original one is in is in Dallas, and um, we thought this would be a great idea. And actually, still to this day, there are other Ouija boards out there, but none that are truly programmable. And so the nice thing is the Ouija board can be made to say and do and move in any way that you wish. And um, we had a hard time trying to figure out how to do that. And the the eventual solution was a, uh, a company called um, Evil Mad Scientists, which makes a product called AxiDraw, which is a, um, a, three, a 2D pin plotter. And so what we do is we take a, an AxiDraw and modify it in a few ways so that it is um, capable of holding essentially a 3D printed um, stick that has some magnets on it. And um, <laughs> with, with much effort, uh, we invented a way to um, hold the, the Ouija planchette, as it's called, um, to move around the board. And so we went through a bunch of different renditions of that. Um, our very first one the uh, the entire the the top of the of the Ouija board sits onto a base, and um, it was a lot of fun. It was really neat. Uh, we ended up having to sort of sand the board down very smooth so that the Ouija the Ouija, the planchette would move across it, and um, and it, and it works really well. It's actually been running for a, about a year now uh, without any issues, and yep. the uh, the Axi draw has been extremely reliable. Um, the downside is the Axi Draw is very expensive, so I think they they run five hundred bucks, um, but they use high quality parts and good stepper motors, and um, they have a nice Linux driver, uh, which allows us to do that and and feel like it's going to be reliable. There there are definitely other two D plotters out there. Um, you can go on AliExpress and find some for one hundred and fifty bucks. But we did that. Yeah, we decided to try it. And we were like, oh, this is so much cheaper. We'll give this a shot and. We got it, and my brother and I probably spent like four hours trying to assemble it before we realized that the parts that were in that box were never going to assemble in a way that created a plotter. Um, yeah, we got a big bag full of random parts. Um, which we're still trying to figure out if we can make it work, but there they, they're just aren't the right parts to make what we ordered. Yeah, and the aluminum extrusions and whatnot. And so um, one challenge with the, the AxiDraw is that it essentially has an, an X and Y grid that the the motor the stepper motors run in and then an arm that sticks out that holds the pin because it is designed to hold a pin um and so this basically makes the size of the box that it goes in fairly large i think it has to be almost like two and a half feet long um, in order to give enough space for all of the equipment to run and so there's a, there there is the possibility of using an xy coordinate system where you get more use of the space. Yeah, exactly. So all the stepper motors and the pin exist in a common space. Um, the The downside is we haven't found a reliable way to do that. And the Axi Draw is just so reliable that um, it's really hard to, to move away from it. Yep. But it's a fun one. And I've seen people interact with it the first time. And it's kind of spooky. I will make sure we have some video recordings of the first one we made a few of the second one we made as well. So we can go ahead and put links to those. Um, one of them's already on YouTube, but we can go ahead and add the other one. So you'll have access to that video as well. And you can probably see that the change in how it was built. One of them, we actually made a table. So we had 
the table legs and it's a freestanding piece of furniture. The other one's a little bit smaller and sits up on top of another piece of furniture. So there are some differences there. Yeah. And, and so the technology behind how it works is the axi draw. And then, um, we're using a raspberry Pi and a, um, an RFID reader. And so we actually, we 3d print the planchette and we embed magnets in different polarities and different um, non-mirrored locations so that the planchette only goes on one way and an RFID in the corner. And so when you set the planchette down in the right place, uh, which is part of the puzzle, the uh, actually draw will go pick it up and then uh, draw everything. And the way that we do that is by using AxiDraw's CLI interface. So they have a, a Linux compiled CLI control and you can actually just tell it to follow an SVG file. So ultimately uh, what the escape room owner gets is they get a picture of their, their Ouija board um, as an SVG file. And what they can do is just take a pencil or their mouse and draw the path that they want the actually draw to take right on that picture and then upload it as the SVG file. And so it allows, it's quite easy to adjust uh, what you want it to say and do um, because it's just following a standard template. Yeah, and, and as the stepper motors are used, there's some unintended but kind of creepy side effects that came into play for us for the Ouija board. But <laughs> they change direction so often that it sounds kind of spooky unintentionally. And it's kind of, it's kind of fantastic. Accidentally, a little bit spooky. Yeah, they have that wonderful vibration uh, that... Uh, depending on, because it has three different stepper motors, so depending on which ones are running, um, you've got lots of weird sort of uh, spooky sounds. <laughs> and so we'll kind of move into our second prop we've made. Again, we've made several of these. We made t uh, rotary phones. We either have them set up so that when you dial, you get a message that helps you f do something and we've also done one where you dial, you get a message, and it triggers a relay so that something else in the room can happen. Um, and we are going to be doing our next prop that we make around that is going to have a lot of different phone numbers that you can call. Those different phone numbers will have different messages, and one phone number is going to also trigger um, a door to open. Yeah, no, we're we're uh, we're really excited about this next version. So there's a, it's a hidden door. Um, you don't know it's there, and um, it, it's just going to be a rotary phone on the desk. And then you have to dial the right number, and then it'll pop a relay and open the open the the door. Um, and I do feel like this is going to be one you get an up close and personal look at once we've got everything finished. We have already done the hidden door. We're working on the section under the stairs. We've already installed the emergency release switch. We have a temporary activation button that we can use until the phone's in place. But this is in our house um, where we used to have an under the stairs escape room. Now we're going to have an under the stairs. Kids can play here and do whatever because my nieces and nephews kept bugging me to make a space for them in our house. We're really excited about them seeing a rotary phone for the first time and trying to figure out how to send a text on it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it'll be fun. And my favorite response so far has been, but I don't know my mommy's phone number. Yeah, You're going to have to put a phone book in your house. And I thought that was hilarious because I did not know that kids today knew what a phone book was. Yeah. Yeah, no, the rotary phones are a lot of fun. So um, as far as I know, there's not a lot of people out there that actually use original 1950s and 60s rotary phones to do uh, props. And so we've got a few of them. We, we always troll Craigslist um, looking for rotary phones under... 40, 50 bucks. Um, so Judy's going to go grab one right now. This is a beautiful example of a beige uh, rotary phone from 1967. And um, it is fully working. And it has actually been modified through this little adapter to connect to a regular in-house phone line, which is, um, which is quite surprising. And so I'm actually a little bit apprehensive about taking it apart. Um, because it's got this uh, this adapter, it works, the ringer works, um, and everything. So we may use it as a real phone, but nonetheless, we have uh, we have quite a few of them. Uh, I've got this beautiful red one that I can't wait to to take apart. But uh, we, through a ton of research, we were able to figure out how to interface into the existing um, speaker and microphone in the phone as well as the uh, dialing mechanism. So you actually hook your Arduino up to 
the, the, the physical mechanical pins that are tapping, which is what that clicking noise is, um, and you count them, and uh, that works great. So you're able to actually figure out very reliably what number they're trying to dial. Um, and, and we used a, so it's an Arduino Uno with a mini DF MP3 player. And so we had to go scour the internet for a dial tone and a, you left the phone off the hook message and a, you dialed the wrong number message and, and, all, the, and the little dot, you know, some of the dots and it, it's been, it was a really interesting experience that even at adults our age who looked at it were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So. Yeah, if you've ever used an old rotary phone, I got a real kick out of it. Um, I'm old enough to have used them to actually dial real numbers. <laughs> uh, I think kids today probably wouldn't have the same satisfaction at hearing the phone off the hook noise, but I loved it. And uh, the mini DF player, they're very inexpensive um, audio players, so they don't have any amplification in them. They're just these little bitty boards about that big, about an inch by an inch, and um, they take an SD card. They... Uh, it has been quite reliable and it's worked well. I will say that they are extremely buggy. Um, maybe not buggy, but perhaps designed with uh, um, a certain use case in mind. And so I spent maybe 10 minutes getting it to work and then 300 hours coding around all of the challenges. So I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the mini DF player, but um, it does work and after some effort, it works great. So. You know, we just keep using them because all the coating's done and they're they're quite reliable. They they seem to, to work for a long time. And the only thing we haven't figured out on our phone, if someone out there knows and would like to help us out, is how to use the bell inside the phone. Yeah. Um, we've used the speaker, the mic, the dial, everything else except the bell that when you when the phone rings. Yeah. So the the bell, it's actually two bells and then a hammer. And there's like a an inductive um motor kind of like a solenoid that runs at 48 volts on and off and it pushes the the little ringer left and right and um i've not actually tried building a 48 volt transformer into the phone off the arduino's power output i'm not sure if that would work um but uh you know if somebody has a circuit design for how to fake the bell ringing that would be great my next step was actually going to be to um, replace it with a different kind of bell that I could run on five volts um, with just maybe even use a little uh, um, servo motor or something like that. But we'll uh, we'll see. At the moment, they don't ring. Yeah, that would be our, our lack there. So I have, as usual, a surprise for Evan. Um, this one, again, I really tend to like to bring things I know he doesn't like out. Um, so I'm going to let him put that phone away. And then we're going to bring out something I hid. It's very small today over to him. And oh. he can, uh, yeah, he already, ah, there you go. Yeah. Have fun with that. So, you know, these, these you get in the package whenever you buy a prototype kit for Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Um, I have an Arduino right here, actually. Um, so this is a genuine uh, Italian Raspberry I'm sorry, Arduino, you know, and it's hooked up to a MediaWiz Sprite. Um, th this is actually a really cool combination if you need to play video. So this would be great for like a fake window that had uh, video shown on it or things like that. I've been very impressed with these devices. Um, they're about a hundred bucks and you can use an SD card or a, 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 a jump drive loaded with any kinds of different files, and then you can control it with very simple commands from the Arduino. So you simply hook it up to a software serial, and uh, you plug that that serial connection into these this little uh, expander board that it comes with, and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. So I've been very, very happy. And we're using um, these DuPont connectors and these little, these little things, just like this thing, and uh, on... Uh, to make that connection. And so, um, yeah, the, the connector at the end here is called a DuPont connector. I don't know why it's called a DuPont connector. Maybe someone can tell me. Um, and uh, I hate them and I hate everything about them. So <laughs> they're great for prototyping and yeah. testing because you can move them around. But our problem with using them in real life applications is if that thing that you put them in is going to move or wiggle or in any form, they have a tendency to come undone. And if you watched, um, well, I don't know if I've even put this out yet, but if you've watched um, 
the inside of our suitcase proper, there's a ton of wires. Most of the things in there that came undone over time were DuPont connections, which is part of why that prop is no longer functional. Yeah, in the beginning, we actually bought the tools to make our own DuPont connections. And so I've made thousands of DuPont connections because we thought that would be a good way to put props together. Um, but what we've learned is that over time, they slowly shake apart. And actually, you can even see uh, this one here is already loose. So just from sitting on my desk and moving it around, it's slowly coming out of the connection. So instead, what we usually do is we will buy a prototype hat um, shield. Hats are for Raspberry Pis. Um, that goes onto this Arduino. So the whole thing stacks on top, and then we will solder the connections that actually go to the different props. And we have never had one of those fail. And uh, the advantage is in the event that the Arduino does fail, which all, you know, these genuine Arduinos generally don't fail. Um, but when they do, you can just pop it off, pop a new one on, and voila, you have a fully operational prop. And I, I don't think I have one of those really handy right now, but it's very similar to this, except maybe without four relays on it. And actually, Evan can show you up close there. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty similar, except that instead of having the four relays on there, it has solder points where I can solder the connections that go to the actual, like the RFID reader or something else within the prop. And then the, on the back side, there's a bunch of pegs that line up with the spots on the Arduino. So we can solder to that board and then plug it into the Arduino and if for some reason something happens to the Arduino, we can just upload the code to a new Arduino and replace the Arduino without having to replace all of those connections too. Yeah. And so this was once again from our wonderful local electronics store, Tanner Electronics. These are $28 online or $6 at Tanner. Um, we have a few of them we bought just in case. <laughs> Uh, we don't use them very often because honestly, typically we have a more complicated circuit that's necessary to to run on the Arduino. So we usually use offboard relays, but sometimes you just need to pop a couple of relays with some code, and these things are wonderful for that, and they're very reliable, and uh, and they don't fall off. <laughs> yep, they're great. And again, a lot of times we only have one relay, not four, so that's also another reason we don't tend to. But um, they're they're a great tool. Yeah. Yep. Any other final thoughts on? Our Ouija boards, our phones on the DuPont connectors? Yeah, well, just that, you know, DuPont connectors are, are quite useful, especially when you have a breadboard that allows you to build a circuit. And everything you see online, whenever people talk about making an Arduino project, they're going to use a breadboard and these little, um, these little connections uh, with the DuPont connectors on them. And they, they work fine. And I even will clip them into alligator clips to extend them. Um, but but I would highly recommend that as you make a final prop, you, you pull them out and replace them with something that's going to last. A little more permanent. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. I know that was a lot of technical talk there from Evan, but those are all things that we've worked on quite a bit. And we're really proud of the phones that we've put into rooms. The Ouija board's probably the favorite prop of mine that we've made in a really long time. And so I'm glad we could share some of that with you today. I'll put you some links and stuff to other resources that we talked about. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll be sure to read those and reach out to you. And thanks for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks, everyone.